Hello, and welcome to my Chapter 5 presentation. I do want to start off saying that my neighbors got two new dogs, so I did want to apologize if you hear any barking in the background. But other than that, we can begin. So what are the elements of design and why do I need to know them? Well, the elements of design are space, line, shape, form, size, scale, color, texture, and value. And these elements are used for visual communication. Now space, there's negative and positive space. Negative space is mostly the empty space, which is like the blank canvas. Positive space is what's filled into that, such as the drawing, like you can see here in the pair of scissors. Sometimes it can be reversed, like in this picture of the yin and yang, how both positive and negative spaces are being used. We also have a line. Line can be used in, separate, in several different ways, such as um, being straight, angled, curved, thick, or thin. They can also be horizontal, vertical, or they can be used to help with movement and um, the flow of the eye. Like in this picture of the elephant, you can see the lines getting thicker, they get a little curved, they get a little thicker at the end and thinner in the middle. So it gives you some depth and you know that that's an elephant. And in this picture of the bridge, you can see that the sides are creating shadows and lines that go straight down the bridge, which are moving your eye to the very center and the end of the bridge. We also have shape and form. Now, the shapes, they say that there are two types of shape, which is inorganic and organic. Now, inorganic shapes are kind of more man-made or geometric shapes, such as the circle, the square, rectangle, star, and organic shapes are more natural. So you find them a lot in nature. So they're more flowy, curved, um, like this leaf or this shell here. There's also size scale. This is important for creating a layout, proportion, and attracting attention. Like in this picture here with the bottle um, and showing the man very small and what the average person's like five feet, six feet, more or less. And um, this is displaying that that bottle is gigantic compared to this person. But it's just a trick. The bottle is obviously closer to the camera than that person. It's just creating an illusion. And for attracting attention, that's where um, a lot of titles take place. Like in this title here, Elements of Art, an ultimate collection of examples and definitions. Now here, what they want to attract your attention on is elements. That's why it takes up about less than half the page. But that's what's drawing you in and then you just continue reading downwards. We also have color. Now the book does read that they think color is so important they're going to uh, give it its own chapter. But for now it just tells us the basics that it draws attention, orders, and organizes and evokes emotion. I did find a website that gave us a few meanings of what the colors are and I tried to get as much of them as I could. Black being power, elegance, gray, professionalism, formality, brown, wholesomeness, warm, blue, calm, intelligence, green, nature, wealth, stability. We also have yellow, which is happiness, orange, creativity, youth, red, energy, danger, purple, luxury, mystery, pink, femininity, playfulness, and we have texture. Here you can use pattern, mimic texture, or use light and shadow. Such as this image here, basket texture. That's just repeating the same pattern over and over again, creating texture. Or mimicking texture could be kind of like this cracked earth, how you're just mimicking what that cracked dry earth would look like. And using light and shadow, would be kind of like the sand. They're kind of using the positive and negative space to create those little ridges in the sand. And lastly, we have value. Value is using light and dark and everything in between, which is a lot of the grayscale. Like in this picture of the eye, you can see that the baseline of the eyelashes is the darkest, along with the pupil. And they even give off a reflection by using a lot more white towards the middle of the pupil is this area here or in this picture of the crystal ball now the hand gives a lot of depth in the wrinkles where the darker spaces are 
or the lighter spots here, you can see where the light's coming from. And since it's darker over here, you know the light's coming from this direction. And this is the last picture I'm going to show. It's um, I just wanted to find a picture that displayed all seven of these, which space, there's a lot of space here on the outside. We also have a line, which is basically everywhere here. There's also different kinds of shapes. We have the organic and the inorganic. I would say this tree is a little more inorganic since it's straighter. We also have color, which is brown. We have light brown, dark brown, and that's also creating um, value. And even with the grays here, you can see the shadows more or less, or the highlights with the white. And I did skip size and scale. You see that the wolf's head is a lot more bigger than the trees here, so it's giving you different proportions, saying that this is the most important part. And texture, which I think shows off a little bit here in this leaf, the middle portion, and the little fuzzies at the end. Kind of giving a light, light texture. If anything, texture is the least amount here. But I thought it was neat that we had a picture with all seven elements displaying. And that's all that I have. Please let me know what you guys think and have a good day.